All right, welcome back to Jeff Kanange Live at Citizen Television. One on one with embattled IEBC CEO Ezra Chiloba. We're asking the question, should he resign? And the numbers are basically the same, Monica, 56, 44. Okay, so let's go straight to the questions, and there are plenty of them. Welcome to JKL, first of all. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Uh, look, um, the Supreme Court ruled there was no culpability or criminal act on, on the part of the IEBC. All right? There's a tweet here by Kume Kucha Phil, who says, Raila Odinga speaks for approximately 10 million Kenyans, plus minus, and he has said with proof that Ezra Chiloba belongs in jail. He says you belong in jail. What do you tell him? Well, uh, I will not be uh, going out to respond uh, to him. Uh, he's among uh, many others who raised concern about how the last election was managed. Uh, and that matter was prosecuted uh, at the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court rendered its verdict on the same. Uh, but as you also say, um, when the Supreme Court made its, its decision, it was very clear that there was no evidence presented before it that would implicate anyone. But most importantly, uh, it also said that uh, that's a decision of the majority that they could not find fingerprints of any individuals uh, to be held uh, responsible. Mm. Uh, and in the circumstance, of course, they also stated that um, if there were failures and there were systemic issues that the commission needed to reflect upon and see how to improve the management of elections, uh, including the fresh presidential election. So it's not so much about us as individuals. If we have to be true to the decision of the Supreme Court, then we must reflect and see, identify what these systemic issues that the Commission ought to be yeah. uh, addressing going forward. Look, how does it feel to go from Chilo Bay, 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 everybody was talking about Chilo yes. Bay, yes. to Chilo Bye Bye, to Chiroba, yes. and now kind of Chilo back. Well, um, Fred, uh, Jeff, uh, the last time I uh, uh, had uh, uh, an interview like this, uh, it was immediately after the, uh, the declaration of results, and I was asked about the same question, and I said, uh, uh, soon and very soon, Kenyans are going to vo forget, uh, uh, and I call it uh, national infatuation <laughs> uh, of the moment because of the events that were happening then. But I think on a more serious note, um, that tells you something about, about life, that things are never static. You have to go through uh, different moments. And the question is whether you as an individual, uh, you're ready to go through that particular pattern uh, of life. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, <coughs> that was not the most important thing. What's the most important is I have a duty, I have responsibilities best told me or upon me on behalf of the people of people of Kenya do you think you conducted a free fair credible election do you think so honestly honestly deep down my heart I can tell you that we conducted an election that was far much better managed than any other election in the history of this country and I'll tell you so many people write me emails write me uh, uh, send me messages both local and international and they all admit that the election was far much better managed than ever before uh, of course until the supreme court and all of us since the first of september uh, we were waiting for the details uh, from the supreme court mm -hmm. and what became evident uh, at the supreme court is that uh, we needed to just improve on our processes and especially when it comes to results transmission where we are uh, we were relying on technology and also standardization of the forms that we use uh, in the electoral process. So if we improve on that, I think uh, we can only have but uh, better elections. Yeah. yeah Look, yeah. we don't want to point fingers at anyone. Right. <clears throat> we don't want to blame anyone. Right? It's right. not a blame game. But there was a memo that leaked from Chairman yeah. Mufula Chabukati. Memo that leaked. And he basically threw you under the bus. 
um, I don't think it was uh, him who leaked the, the memo. So if you're talking about throwing someone under the bus, uh, I don't think he's the one who was uh, responsible. As the chairman of the commission, he had issues of concern, and he thought that it, those issues uh, would be better be responded to but by the accounting officer and the CEO, and that's why he wrote to me. And you responded? Yes, I responded to the, uh, to the memo. And uh, when we did that as a commission, we came together, we looked at the issues of concern that the chairman had raised, and the commission also looked at the responses that uh, uh, we had uh, provided as the entire team of the secretariat. How come yours didn't leak? Well, again, I said that is not a concern for us. It's unfortunate that it actually, uh, the memo that was sent to me leaked. Uh, but that is not the issue here. The issue is whether the issues that chairman had raised as issues of concern were responded to. Uh, of course, we cannot compete uh, uh, between ourselves uh, or myself with any other person who is trying to influence the process or processes within the commission. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it was okay. the chairman. Okay, let's go through yeah. the leaked memo. Nah. Let's start with servers. There was, a, there was talk that you all, IEBC, refused to open the servers. What do you have to say? Yeah, it's unfortunate that we got to that particular uh, conclusion, Jeff. Uh, Jeff uh, because if you look at the history of, uh, of that order of the court that uh, demanded that we give access to the petitioners, as well as a third respondent, that was uh, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, as agents. What we did is that uh, immediately the order was issued. Uh, the team met, uh, both uh, IABC's team and all parties in court and the registrar, mm -hmm. and agreed on the modalities of how to access uh, information. And if you read the report by the experts, you realize that uh, eventually the commission actually gave access only that because of the mechanism and the procedures that were followed uh, uh, to provide that particular access it took a little longer so the assumption that uh, the court actually met, uh, made at the time was that it was going to be easy uh, you'll get back you'll get to the IBC then it'll be easier for for, 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 for the uh, actors to be able to get access yeah. it wasn't as easy and uh, part is because of the security uh, aspects of the system and also the collaboration and communication between us and the service providers. Our servers were cloud-based, based in Europe, and f we needed uh, robust coordination at the time. And when that coordination uh, 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 happened, we eventually had uh, the system or the access provided at about 3 p.m. Uh, on the last day, which was about two hours before the report was to be submitted to the court. So you say the servers were opened? Yes, servers were opened. And if you read that report, it actually acknowledges that servers were opened. And had there been more time granted, then there would have been full access to all the participants. Unfortunately, the time uh, uh, for the court was not av uh, available. And they needed to, to make a decision. And how come nobody told the rest of us, or we just did we just overlook that? No, it's only maybe people not pay uh, greater interest in the report of the experts. But the experts were very clear. There was partial access, partly because the servers were open. And had we been given more time, then that could have been made possible. Yeah. And something else, Jeff, about um, uh, 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 the servers and access. Uh, the technical people tell us. If you look at the standards or security standards that you apply on a secure system, if it's easier for someone to just get into your uh, uh, offices and access the servers uh, in the manner in which we assume they're going to be accessed uh, within one hour, within two hours, then it tells you that perhaps you're not secure. But the system that we have the levels of security that were put in place was such that it was not a, a walk in the park. It was not an easy uh, endeavor. So had we had this understanding across the board among all the actors, including the court, perhaps 
we could have done justice uh, to the process. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell me something, the server, uh, is it in the cloud? Is that where it is? Yes, yes. It's up there in the cloud? No, well, when they say in the cloud, yeah, I mean, that it's, is not it's located here, but yeah, yeah. it's somewhere. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, there's still uh, that infrastructure in terms of that uh, access is still available. Uh, and because the commission has been interested in bringing bring a closure to these issues about logs and servers in terms of what happened uh, during the election. Uh, it has approved an independent audit of the system so that Kenyans, Kenyans may be told or may find out what actually happened yeah. so that uh, we have a closure uh, on this subject. And is this still Saffron Morpho that's going to deal with it? Yeah, in terms of uh, Saffron Morpho is our main uh, supply of technology yes. for the election. Yes. Uh, they still host uh, or uh, deal with our servers. Yes. But when you're talking about indep independent audit, uh, okay. it's a separate company. Back to the servers. That. Because Saffron Morpho was saying they would have to uh, reconfigure the servers in time for this fresh election. No, they were saying many things about how we get ready for the election. Yes. Because the election is not just about servers is about uh, getting the 40,000 plus kits for the 40,000 polling station. And that means you have to collect all the kits from the polling stations after, of course, the August 8th election. Mm -hmm. uh, bring, bring them back, refurbish them, uh, reinstall the software, uh, and that reinstallation must, ha must be a software that uh, has been improved upon. We've done some modification to ensure that we are more compliant with yeah. the Supreme Court uh, decision, uh, as well as uh, uh, ensuring that uh, we have the secu uh, 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 security that yeah. is adequate for. And are they ready? Yeah, now they're, they're, they're in the process. The kids, the they kids. will be ready for the 26th. Yes, yes, they'll be very much ready. Uh, we've been working for the last three weeks. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we're on course. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of kids, yes. on election day, right. there was a complaint that the Kim's kids were switched off. Mm, not on the election day. Well, I think, I think the issue was that uh, when they were getting from point A uh, to point, point B, yes, they were switched off. What specifically was switched off? The GPRS. <laughs> now, there are technical issues around uh, that issue. Uh, I think it's one of the issues that uh, uh, my chairman raised uh, in his, uh, as one of the areas of concern, and we've been able to respond to it. Uh, GPRS, uh, I'm meant to understand, is basically the manner in which you define the network coverage that you have 2G, 3G, or 4G. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, for for sure, but if you're going to use uh, 3G, 4G, uh, and the fact that we transmitted results on all the keys, that means the, the GPRS was active. Uh, but I think the issue was about uh, uh, GPS uh, and whether we, we were and whether we were going to use GPS to be able to locate the uh, the kits. And if you look at our our technical specifications that we gave to the supplier. Uh, GPS was not one of the uh, uh, critical specifications that we, we included in the tender document. Uh, but that does not mean that we are not able to trace uh, the kits, uh, especially uh, from the polling station in terms of our, our distribution. Each kit has a, a unique number mm -hmm. for ease of identification. And that number is randomly selected. That means you cannot predict uh, 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 the polling station number in as far as the kit allocation is concerned. And that is a security measure that is in bill to enable us to trace that particular kit when required. So even in this coming election, it's more or less the same mechanism that we are, we are deploying. But before, w when we claim that uh, on, on that date uh, we had switched it off, that's not uh, the correct position. No. No. Okay. Um, results from non-prescribed forms, the bone of contention, <laughs> Form 34A yes. and Form 34B. Yes, yes. Okay? Yes. So, if we are to go with a minor KI ruling, if you will, it's going to, all, all the, the tallying will come from the Form 34B. Yes. Right? Yes. Which is coming from the constituency level. Right. Not the 40,000 plus polling stations. That was our interpretation. Right? Right. Does that make your work easier? Well, maybe to put that in perspective, into perspective, that 35 days before the election, 
uh, we had the Minor KI uh, Court of Appeal uh, judgment, which to a large extent affected the manner in which we organized uh, the election, in particular the results management pathway. And the challenge that we faced was how do we ensure that results from the constituency get to the National Tallying Center in a more secure manner? Because under the Marina KI case, the assumption was that the, uh, the returning officers will not have to troop, or to, <laughs> that's the term they used, mm -hmm. will not have to troop to Bombers of Kenya mm -hmm. to submit the physical uh, of forms of 34Bs. And the court said that the returning officers shall electronically transmit their forms to the National Tiling Center. So our understanding and our interpretation was that we were going to have returning officers uh, prepare their results, and since their results are final, there was no need for us to verify those 34Bs against 34As. After all, the returning officers at the constituency level will have done that job mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So that's why we worked with 34Bs. But the Supreme Court, of course, now says that we need now to have 34Bs as well as 34S so that we verify the authenticity of those results. Yeah. Which now it means that we have to change our results pathway now. And what we're going to see in the coming election is that uh, the returning officers shall be required to physically deliver 34Bs and 34S mm. to the National Returning Officer, who is the chairman of the commission. Okay. So, yeah. Let me see if I get this straight. In, in the August 8th election, right. what were you basing your counts on? 34A or initially, before you got the Bs? No, no, no. 34Bs. We waited for th 291 34Bs before we declared the final result. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, and our logic was very simple. Is a returning officer who is responsible in ensuring that the polling station results are reflected correctly in 34Bs. And then their role was to submit it to the National Tiling Center. And it, when it came to the National Tiling Center, our interpretation of the minor KI case was the National Returning Officer's responsibility was to ensure that the successful candidate had met the threshold set out under the Constitution, mm. which was um, ensure that we get 50% plus one vote and at least 25% in 24 of the counties. Correct. And that is how we interpreted the minor KI case. And that's how then our pattern uh, that led to the results that were nullified yeah. was actually structured. Okay, I'll get to the ROs, returning officers, right. in a moment, and also the chief returning officer. Right. Because there are new electoral laws that are probably going to be in place in the next few days. I'm going to ask for your comment in a moment. But first, there was also more than 9,000 plus logins, you know this, using the chairman's login. How does that happen? Uh, first of all, there are not 9,000 logins. 9,000 plus? There are 9,000 transactions. Okay. Yeah, logins is... So that someone means logged in more than 9,000 times? No, 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 no. Uh, Somebody transacted or processed data uh, in different ways, mm -hmm. 9,000 plus. Mm -hmm. Okay? Using the chairman's login? Uh, using the chairman's login account. And what that means is this. When the minor KI case got us and uh, we were now to transmit results electronically from the constituency to the National Tiling Center, which was not our plan initially. Mm. Our initial plan was the, national ret uh, the returning officers from the constituency would del physically deliver the forms to the National Tiling Center. But because of the decision of the, Supreme, uh, of the Court of Appeal, uh, we said then we must come up with a framework uh, that will allow that transmission to happen, which was outside the Kim's system mm -hmm. because by that but by, by that time the Kim system had been set up already so this transmission from the constituency to the national tiling center was an additional mechanism to allow us to comply with the minor care case so each returning officer the 291 plus the chairman were given special accounts mm -hmm. to enable them to complete that transfer from the constituency to the national tiling center yeah. and then the data will be received on chairman's account, which is at the National Tiling Center. 
And basically, the role of that account was you receive, you confirm, this form is from uh, this particular constituency, okay, transferred from uh, that particular uh, folder to the relevant folder, download it, and print it to allow the agents and our officers at the, at the, at the, at the auditorium the, at Bomas of Kenya to process the results. So we saw that account as a transactional account. So at any time, there was a form that came in that was not properly formatted, for example, or was not properly signed, will be able to detect it. Then there were officers who will call back uh, to the, uh, we'll call back the returning officers to ensure that they send the correct form. Why were they sending the wrong form? Why, what, what was wrong? You know, sometimes, uh, of course, because they had this Excel sheet of preparing for preparing from 34 briefs. Yeah. And sometimes they'll make mistakes because of margins you print wrongly, or when you're scanning the form uh, uh, on the printer, then through the system, you, you make mistakes or some pages are truncated. So you just had to ensure that the right form has been sent. So every time it will come to the chairman's, uh, that particular account, uh, it will be processed. Relevant information will be uh, obtained, then decisions will be made. And the other bit is that um, that account was actually active from the 31st of July. That is 80 days before the election, up to the 13th uh, of August, uh, seven days after the election. But the previous one, previous transactions were basically training um, uh, officers, testing, to just ensure that the system, yeah. which was very new, was actually working. So that is what ended up accounting for the 9,000 transaction, including just moving a file from one folder to another. It's a transaction. It's a transaction. Yeah, so it will, and experts tell me that those were no more transactions. So you're saying there was nothing untoward, there was no, nothing illegal? Nothing illegal. Uh, uh, and I believe that uh, the officers who did that were doing it in good faith. But of course we learn lessons from that uh, in the sense that uh, um, if we're given another chance, uh, given the manner in which these issues have been raised and uh, reacted to, I think we'll do a better job. Uh, perhaps change the account name uh, so that it's neutral and also have proper protocols that will ensure certainty, transparency, you know, and accountability mm. so that people have faith in, in a system like that. Were some 34 Bs not signed? Uh, were there cases of that? Uh, in as far as I'm concerned, uh, all 34 Bs were signed. And A's? A's, uh, we had 40,000. Uh, polling stations, 34, plus. Uh, uh, 40,000 polling stations yeah. with 34 A's. Some, of course, you'll find that uh, some were not signed, but they were not significant. And if a form is not signed, then the returning officer has power on, on, in terms of what they need to do when it comes to the authenticity of that particular form. Yeah. But when it comes to Form 34 B's, um, uh, we have seen that all the forms were signed. So if you've crossed your T's and dotted your I's, uh, why is NASA so adamant about their irreducible minimums, including you going home and your chief IT officer as well, and well, other mean, people? I mean, many of us, uh, many of us. Um, I mean, they have a right to express themselves, uh, express their disappointment. We live in a free society, a democratic uh, society where people are supposed to be given a chance to express their concern and I don't think it's improper for them to actually present those minimum demands uh, because they form the basis of uh, uh, discussions in terms of how we make our electoral process uh, much better. So we have received those demands and as a commission we've been deliberating on them and uh, on 22nd of September this month the chairman actually uh, responded to those uh, concerned, uh, those concerns and what we've been seeing in the recent past is of course uh, our efforts to ensure that we come to a common understanding in terms of what is possible for the short term and what's not possible uh, and especially if you want to have a successful election come 26 October. Yeah. So it seems like you've covered your bases so well. So what could have gone so wrong? 
I mean, I, I don't get it. Um, well, this election was different. Uh, the one that we just concluded and nullified by the Supreme Court was different. Uh, we've been trying to reflect in terms of what actually went wrong. Because in terms of planning, we planned properly. In terms of execution, we, we, I think we, we carried out some of the most efficient operations ever uh, when it comes to elections management. Um, and if you read the Supreme Court uh, decision also, they don't seem to have any qualms with the other processes around the election, uh, all the way to counting of the results. The issue became transmission of those results, uh, which we acknowledge uh, there were challenges, and which challenges we must be able to fix if we must meet the same standards uh, as the court has, has stated. And the other issue was the use of standardized forms. So if we do not use, uh, if we want to guarantee the uh, integrity of the, uh, of the election, uh, we need to have some standardization when it comes to the forms that we use. Uh, something that was not even there, has, had never been there uh, uh, until uh, this year. So when we say that we're going to put in standards to ensure that our forms are easy to press, they have security features, uh, we became victims of our own success. <laughs> that some of our officers did not follow procedure, did not comply, or they failed to just uh, uh, follow the due process. Yeah. That's why we got where we got. And maybe that's why there's going to be some laws coming in, and we'll talk about that in a short, little yeah. short while. But quick question, Al Gurai, is still going to print the papers? Yes. Uh, as for the decision of the commission, uh, as we stand now, uh, that's the only option we have. Uh, if we have to get ready for this uh, election. And that decision was made last week, and we're already in touch with the Alugre, trying to see how to secure ballot papers. Mm -hmm. um, what we just need to do is to see how to get all stakeholders on board, just the way we did last time. Uh, because at the end of the day is our election. Uh, there are things we are able to do in the short term. And in this case, uh, Alug Algre became the only option because yeah. we have a two-year contract with them. Right. Yeah. Some people don't want Algre. They say Algre is uh, there's a conflict of interest somewhere or other. That matter was resolved at, this, at the Court of Appeal uh, even before we went to the last election. Okay. Yeah. How about this matter? Ekuru Alcott. Is he on the ballot or not? Yeah, Ekuru. First of all, Ekuru is my friend. <laughs> I've known, him, I've known him for many years. Here comes the punch. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you can't believe that. You know, we fight in court, yeah. but uh, after two, two days, we'll call each other. <laughs> okay. Uh, from where we sit, uh, we looked at uh, who will be the candidates for this coming election. We looked at the Supreme Court decision in the Raila Odinga petition of 2013. Mm. And there's an observation which was made to the effect that... Uh, only the petitioners, successful petitioners, and the incumbent president uh, will be the candidates for this coming election. So that is how we interpret it. And uh, it meant, therefore, that uh, Kuru uh, will not be uh, on the ballot. I know he's going to court. Uh, we've also gone to court to defend the position. Yeah. But then the court is going to guide uh, on what happens. Now, the challenge we're going to face now is that... Um, the challenge, if he's on. Oh, if I he's mean, not. If the court declares that he's on, yes. uh, there'll be some operational challenges there. As we, we were saying, we go 21 days to the election. One of the things we need to get right is technology, and especially the component of results transmission. So the software is updated, and we've already configured the kits. We, there's some kits which are being packed already. Uh, so seven days before the election, we need to start distributing those kids. Mm. And if there's no candidate now, it means therefore that it'd be very difficult uh, to include that particular candidate uh, and if we expect to use the results transmission system. So there are those operational ch uh, challenges that we are going to face. Yeah. yeah. Other operational challenges, NASA demonstrations every Monday, every Friday. Are you bothered? Well, I've said before that... Uh, this country, if we have to grow as a democracy, let each person be free to express 
himself or herself because that's how we grow mm. and uh, yeah them coming to anniversary towers or wherever they are across the country uh, it's their right to do that and let us give them the freedom to do that because today it's them tomorrow it might me yeah. <laughs> it might be me and yeah. i would like to have the same forum so the but the bottom line is what are the issues that are being prosecuted out there can those issues be be handled so as an individual uh, uh, i'm not so much concerned that uh, uh, they're demonstrating what i'm concerned about is whether as a country we can come together and resolve the issues that uh, affect us all. Yeah. yeah. Look, I want to take a break, come back, yeah. talk about the new electoral laws, possible ones, for, including jail term for returning officers who don't sign the forms you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that maybe not only Chebukati should be able to announce as a chief returning officer. And going after Safaricom. Why just <laughs> Safaricom? <laughs> they, they're not your only provider, right? I mean, we... we, 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 we. There are many. There are many. Yeah, there are many. Yeah. yeah. And, and and you know, bottom line, I mean, you, you're gonna, you, you must get out. You must have some severe ulcers <laughs> from August the eighth <laughs> till October the fourth. Jeff, I mean, uh, that's a story for another day. <laughs> but you got a job to do. Story for a book, maybe. <laughs> Let's take a break, come back. Monica, what are the numbers? We're asking, should Ezra Chiloba resign as CEO of the IEBC? What are our numbers, Monica? Are the servers working? 56. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. 47%, 57% say yes. 43% say no. Keep Why is the number constant? <laughs> is, is the number constant? Uh, yes. No, we were down to 56. But that's what happened at Bomas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where's the 34B, Monica? Yes. Going to take a break. Come back. Keep tweeting. Keep texting. Keep letting us know. We're having a one-on-one, -on -one, a serious discussion with 21 days and 21 nights to go before the October 26th election. This is a talk. This is the serious discussion. This is what we should be talking about. Jeff Kinange Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.